history of aviation begins with the balloon, really thousands of years ago with the first attempts to get off the ground perhaps, but then more recently, about 230 years ago, the first attempts to get humans off the ground. I guess it's the simplest form of aviation, uh, and even today we still see lots of records being attempted for hot air ballooning. Balloons are always attractive to people. If you take a bunch of children and fly a balloon past them, they will all smile. But it's something gentle, about a balloon is something beautiful, serene. Balloons are loved by everybody. Uh, we were competing with British Airways with their 350 planes. So we needed to come up with fun ways uh, of promoting the airline getting Virgin on the map. Richard Branson is one of the most exciting pioneers alive today and certainly no stranger to record breaking having set the Atlantic crossing record by boat uh, a few years before his balloon trip. Um, I got a knock on my boat door, which where I lived on a houseboat, and Pearl Lindstone said, OK, you've done it in a boat, I think we could do it in a balloon. And um, so I asked him, are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. I said, OK, well, I presume that you've worried about the safety aspects, then let's give it a go. Sounds, sounds like a great adventure, and a great adventure it was. One of the greatest challenges of the 20th century in aviation was to fly across the Atlantic in a hot air balloon. We finally saw it happen in 1987, thanks to two really iconic pioneers, Richard Branson and Pearl Lindstrand. Well, look, I love adventure. I love uh, trying to achieve things that uh, haven't been achieved before. Um, you know, the furthest anybody had been at that stage was 600 miles, the Atlantic's three and a half thousand miles. So um, it was a, a long, uh, eventful, exciting flight. Well, there was a certain drama during the inflation and takeoff, we lost a fuel tank. Once we came across the Atlantic, we climbed up in the jet stream, it was remarkably smooth. And um, because everybody wanted to talk to me, we had the Concorde coming across, and that's certainly very noticeable. We get a big bump, and we think, what the heck was that? We had. A bad forecast for Scotland. We came in the Northern Ireland. And people said land in Northern Ireland because there's a little fog in Glasgow. So we came in to land, but it was too quick and um, there was power lines ahead, so we, we had to take off again. And then we decided to land in water. We have, have landed on the land, the record was already set. Flying further would not give us any more credibility. So we landed in the water <clears throat> and then the Explosive balls that will separate the envelope from the gondola didn't work. And um, started going up again. At that point, you don't know whether half worked, they will break later up in flight. So the best thing is to get out of there. So I dived down and I shouted to Richard, dive out too. But he was a bit slow. By the time he got to the edge, the capsule was airborne and it was too late to jump. So he sailed up. I'm now in the water with nothing but my overall on. He's on the upper deck of the capsule with a life vest, with emergency rations and uh, emergency transmitter, that whole lot, and I had nothing. Um, so I climbed back into the uh, capsule and uh, decided to try to fly the beast down. So I sat down and started flying it. And to my great relief, as I came through the clouds, I saw the HMS Argonaut and two helicopters and realized they would obviously see me. And I thought the best bet was to have a go at taking the balloon down as slowly as possible and then throwing myself off at about 40 feet and obviously making sure that I threw myself off downwind of it. So as we were coming down, I put the um, door back in and got rid of my parachute, got up onto the top and fortunately at the right moment threw myself off into the water, which was freezing cold. helicopter from the ship, it was Orgonaut, that found me after two hours. At that point, he didn't bring down the, the cable, but the sling and took me to him. He was going around in a circle. I was like, what's he doing? I was about to give him, show him my face, when my face hit a rubber dinghy with a couple of kids in the see me and the shoreline had come out. And they dragged me on board the boat and back into Port Rush. But there was two hours, 12 degree water, and that is I would say that probably was about 10 15 minutes from giving in. Uh, and we did achieve it. Um, it was a rather dramatic ending, being pulled out of the sea from, by a helicopter. 
um, but um, but that was that was my first experience and uh, and the Guinness, Guinness World Record team were, were fantastic in their support and help. It takes an exceptional amount of courage to, to tackle a long distance hot air balloon journey, especially when crossing an ocean where you're so exposed to the elements and to the unpredictability of the weather. Richard Branson and Pearl Lindstrand faced so many challenges and yet proved themselves to be completely worthy of their Guinness World Records achievement.